Hello and welcome to the Red Men TV. It's player eight in time. Liverpool beat West Bromwich Albion by a goal to nil. Thanks to Roberto Firmino header and a Lucas Leiva assist. The yes. love that. Uh, I'm going to start with the goalkeeper. I'm going to give him a nine out of ten. I think he's, you know, he saved us again. That one on one uh, second half comes out brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Gets down, pushes the ball wide, and he was like that all day again. And you know, the times that they did get into the area, they were jostling on him, and he was doing well. He was, he was, he was focused on what he had to do, and that was beat the first man and then get the punch. And that's what he did really well and again it's the second time in a week he's saved us points there and that's what he's done that's what he's done since he's been back into the side and fair play to Simon Mignolet because you know what if he carries on playing like that he'll be one of the reasons that we get into the top four I really believe that I'm going to start with right back next um, Nathaniel Klein I'm going to give him a seven out of ten I thought there was a couple of there was a couple of times, especially early first half, where the ball in behind him was too easy for them to be honest with you. But second half, you know, towards the end, he puts a great tackle in right near the end to stop them getting the cross in. I think he needs to do a little bit more than that. You know, I don't know whether he's tired. He's played a lot of football this season. It looks to me like his his levels have just dropped off a little bit. But you know, he's one of those players that doesn't really get rested. He's one of those players that has to play every single game. So I can afford. I can I can understand why he's tiring. Uh, Joel Matip, eight out of ten. I thought he was good again. You know. Know, when, he, when he strides forward with the ball, he looks great. He, bring, he brings us onto the front foot, and then we turn that into attacks. Absolutely brilliant. What he does defensively again, you know, always there for a header. Loves to throw a little slide in if we're. Um Hello, mate. Whoever that was, um, loves to throw a little slide in. Loves to get involved, and you know what? He sets the tempo for the defence. We look a completely different defence with him at the heart than if it's anybody else in his place. Dejan Lovren, eight out of ten again. I've got to say, Lovren, you know, when he plays simple defensive football, I think he's really good. It's when he starts to overcomplicate it that I think we, he starts to struggle. Uh, so yeah, an eight out of ten for him. James Milner, gonna give him a seven out of ten again as well. Um, another one who. I don't know whether he is the left back that we want or he's the left back that we need him to be, but he's James Milner and he's very, very difficult to get past. I was saying to Paul during the game, you know, he, he just leans on players, he just makes it difficult for them. So even if they've got the pace on him, he makes it very difficult for people to get around him. Uh, Lucas Leave, I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. I thought he was brilliant again. You know, he was everywhere he needed to be. He picked up a yellow card, of course, but it's Lucas Leave. He always does that. Moving on, Emery Chan, again, you know, he set the tempo for me for this Liverpool side today. Another early tackle, and he's been doing that the last few games. He, he really looks like he's he's starting to find his feet this season which is good because we've needed him to he's taking the game by the scruff of the neck and that's exactly what we need from this Emre Chan. Uh, Genie Wijnaldum what can I say about Genie Wijnaldum his boss he's absolutely brilliant I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10 um, whether, was he that much better than Emery Chan? Probably not, but he's got a better song, so I'm giving him the extra point. Uh, left hand side, Phil Coutinho, I thought he was outstanding again. Always offering the opportunity for passes, always being there, always wanting to, willing to go round this man and to cut inside and, and look to work something, Roberto Firmino. So I'm going to give him a, a 9 out of 10. Roberto Firmino, I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10, much the same as Phil Coutinho. You know, always there, again, just wanting to play little balls in. And I think if we'd have started a little bit more. Firmino and Coutinho a little bit more sense. We might have had a little bit more luck, but I think they need a striker who's comfortable coming back for the ball. And, and this brings me on to Divock Origi. For large parts of the game, I really felt like he was isolated. I thought he got better, better second half. But for me, what's really strange about Divock Origi is that when he comes back towards the ball, he's not very good. He needs the ball in front of him. He, he wants to be running with the ball at his feet. And when he does that and he runs down the channels, he looks in absolute danger. When he's coming back for the ball, he's looking for these little one-twos something just doesn't click for me and I think you know the times that we did get the ball in from Phil or from Bobby into his feet it seems to break down all the time whereas if you give him the ball in front of him and just let him run at players then he'll do a lot more so ultimately that boils down to a 7 out of 10 for him Sturridge when he came on really anything 6 out of 10 maybe uh, and, and that's the play ratings if you agree or disagree of course let me know by letting me know in the comments by writing what you think in the comments section below of course and Alberto Moreno I nearly forgot him Paul's like Moreno you know why I nearly forgot him? Because he done me head in. He done me head in because he can't kick a ball into a net that's really quite big with no goalkeeper. And that's really annoying because it's Alberto Moreno. We played a lot of money for him. Should be able to kick a ball into a net with no goalkeeper. I'm just saying. He gets a 5 out of 10. He gets a 4 out of 10. He gets a 3 out of 10 for that. Just that. If he'd have done that, I think that might have been the only thing that he did. Anyway, if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the Redmen TV on YouTube.